my liege, shall we siege? So yes, Transformers Generations, colon War for Cybertron Trilogy, colon Siege is well underway and seems to be mostly keeping it mainstream by rolling out the biggest faces from the highest places. It does feel like an odd choice then for the only deluxe Decepticon in the entire first two waves to be Skytread. Some largely forgotten Z-list Zero face, formerly known as Flywheels and best remembered for that one time he died immediately. That is, it would have felt like an odd move had his bot mode bisection bro battle trap not just made his commanding comeback and blown all our butts off not ten months past. So what do you say we double down on the Duocon Reduocon with a full on Flywheels family feedback? Yes indeed, time for some Treducation! <laughs> So we begin, as we always seem to these days, with a close-in on the 1987 Transformers catalogue and a slow zoom on the Duocons, which I really don't feel like explaining again. But for me, Flywheels was very much the Andrew Ridgely of the group. Like, he never quite made it out of Battle Trap's shadow, blended into the background like so much brown smoke with its pooier colours and stodgier silhouette formed from a drab little plain Jane jet plane and a bummed out battle tank. But you know Chaboy can't resist that Duocon double spring action! And while he is definitely a naff one. He's an affable kind of naff. Naffable. Like, check him out, he's packing a host of classically Decepticon-y hallmarks. The head straight up kicks ass with its rad blitzwingy visor. I'm feeling that semi-seekery chest chunk and he even gets one over on Battle Trap by actually having arms. He's also good for a giggle or two, like his humongous mono-wedge pointy feet have got no rhythm. And honestly, I'm deeply uncomfortable around that lewd little groin gun. So you know what? I guess Flywheels is just as beguiling as any of the mid to late G1 Dorkatrons I'm always banging on about. I just couldn't see. Because all these years he's been cloaked away behind this impenetrable colour miasma of pure boring. <sighs> we could have been so good together. And that was your lot for Flywheels for a decade or three. I mean, it's not like he's the kind of guy with the stay in power to show up in alternators or get reissued or, you know, the same thing I said about Battle Trap and Pounce from Wingspan and Punch Counter Punch. It's one of those. We've been here before, is what I'm saying. Welcome to the show. But he did pop his head out the one time in the relatively recent Titan's Return, when this little Titan Master Tank jet jitterbugged into my heart. Yes, indeed, Flywheels put in a surprise pocket-sized Prime Wars cameo under the fresh and somewhat more fitting name of Skytread. So, the Sky Guy himself is your typical Titan Master Teeny Geezer, just the tiniest guy who ever did fly in a somewhat livelier version of the traditional Flywheels colour blend. I call it Turdish Delight. Light. And he crumples up into a mildly marvellous portable generations version of his own face, which you can happily wham onto any one of the Titan bods, but his creamy chocolate styles only seem to work on select ones, like the ones that are already brown or the ones that look good with everything anyway. He also doesn't seem super on board with the flight mode, like because of that cheeky helmet hump he can't seem to quite settle into it like Terrible does. Still though, he does look super sweet as a tiny version of himself driving his own tank mode, and at the time this felt like properly crucial. This was the only mainline Duocon character representation since actual G1. Could you believe it? Anyway, then Battle Trap happened, and then Siege kicked off, and then it was now. Let's do this. So yeah, it was up to Skytread to awkwardly open the show on Siege as the first deluxe Decepticon in the whole War for Cybertron trilogy. Like some oblivious toddler who blundered out into the spotlight before the curtain lifted on the actual stars. But come on, he's trying. And he does kind of bring that bad guy attitude as a fierce fresh figure that definitely delivers a satisfyingly straightforward generationization of his dusty old duo bod, packing all his military motifs and trademark touches, right down to his daft pointy feet and obnoxious popped collar. It is kind of heartwarming in a weird way to see old Treddy Roosevelt so rigorously redone with such sincerity. And I love that with such an intense level of detail and action figure legitimacy, he somehow still doesn't look badass. You just don't expect a Decepticon Robotank Warplane Death Trooper to be so non-threatening. Like he is definitely crushing the look with his broad beefy bod and hefty cardboard box shins, but it just all gets cancelled out by his giant vulnerable visor and clumsy demeanour. Anyway, Posen's just shy of the full package. Like, he can move when he needs to, but I feel like his massive galoshes could have used a bit of sideways ankle action. And the waist joint keeps getting coccyx blocked by his ass-mounted kibblefish. Colours are a problem, because it's maroon and it's brown and it's grey and I am nodding off. And yes, that's what flywheels are supposed to look like, but G1 accurate. It's not always a compliment. But anyway, as a siege lad, little Judge Treads boast an abrace of burgundy blasters. And check it out, you can bang the baby one and the big bastard's bum end to build this badass behemoth boomstick. He's also well up on all the siege business, like he can cock it up good with his hefty quota of full body weapon ports. I call them harm pits. Definitely half assed it on the damage detail though, barely bringing in some silver scrapes around the ankles. Come on, either do it or don't. But on the whole, little Treddy Vedder's Robo Boy mode really is way cooler than it has any right 
great to be. It just nails the flywheels feels and shows us what a duocon can really do, Ocon. And yeah, next to the other Siege superstars, I guess he's not the coolest robot around, but come on, what a glow up. Transformation's all pretty basic, but it feels pretty cool to see how they've made old Shred Flintstone work with a manual transformation. Like, there's no sprungy automorph bollocks on the go, so you gotta get in there and make it happen. And check it out, he transforms into his own little battle squad. They're both kinda cute, I guess, with adorable Demi Deluxe proportions and some pretty wild sculpting on the go, but neither's really got a lot going on. Like, check out the plane portion, it's definitely a feisty little one. Just a funky little no-frills jet plane japester with some appreciably sharp styles in this comically tiny tail fin. Colours are actually pretty kick ass now they've dialed down the brown. Like the crimson looks killer with these swish silver spots and the big blue bug eyes just banging. But he really ain't slick with these massive stupid arms tucked underneath like a dumbass. Slightly sloppier sitch with the trouser tank I'm afraid. I mean it definitely does look like Flywheels' is bum end but it's just all a bit of a shambles. I do love the lump and shape of it and the treads look pretty heavy. But like the chunky bit doesn't seem to want to line up super tight. The gun doesn't always want to snug in there right. And like I don't know about you, but I prefer it when a tank does the twisty turret thing. I guess, what do you want from half a deluxe? So they do both feel a smidge undersold, and real talk, they're very little more than a G1 redo for the sake of a G1 redo. But that's where Siege comes in! Check it out, they can both get their war face on in spectacular style, and rack up laser guns and whatever until they basically become accessories for COG, which honestly is probably more to COG's credit, but I'm still counting it. So yeah, there's actually a decent amount of fun to be squozing out of this plucky little one-man gang. You just gotta get creative, and, you know, by most of the toy line. So I guess little Treddy Mercury was always going to be something of a wild card. He's precisely the charming little crowd-filling chump I wanted him to be. And like, how great is it to have both Duocon bros revamped and back in the game after 30-something years? As if this even happened. And if anything, Treddy Kruger even seems to have come out of the whole thing a bit better. Like, the robot just makes more sense. He's got the right colour arms. And his chunkier waistline just looks healthier. He kind of makes Battletrap look like some failed bodybuilder who just discovered Photoshop. But it is kind of confounding that Skytread didn't get to do the two dudes thing. I don't know if I'd say it's disappointing, but it's just way less fun, you know? I mean, the best he can do is swap out his car keys for Battle Trap's jeans, or like, do a solo trousers post-DJD mode. But in the end, I'm alright with it, because they both have a thing now. Like, they're not just same gimmick, different style. It gives Battle Trap the distinction of being the guy who got turned into two guys, and makes that even more special, while Skytread gets the absolute honour of being the one true generation's duo. Duocon, who kept it real and stuck to his roots, who stayed committed and gave the Duocon dynasty a decidedly dynamite upgrade. And if you ask me, that's pretty fly for a shite guy. <laughs> Showed up. Wait, big thanks to Chris Winburn for sending Siege Skytread my way, and serious cheers to Atticus Cy McCarthy for his longtime patronage. Peace! Be sure to subscribe for more Thew's Awesome Transformers reviews. Robocentric vocabulasm.